main host Rakesh Kapoor and you're watching Coffee and Crypto. If you're a regular on the show, you already know everything there is. You need to know about crypto and if not and this is your first time, well, good morning. Hello. Welcome to the world of cryptocurrency and this is the right time really to understand this world of cryptocurrency. And why do I say that? Because as we speak, a new crypto bill in the country is being written down. It's going to be a historic time. for the country as a new regulation bill is in the works what ndtv knows exclusively is that the cabinet note is ready in just 15 days there will be a signature of the prime minister on that cabinet note and before the end of 2021 wait for it the crypto bill the new crypto will will already be tabled in parliament this is going to happen in all likelihood and this is what ndtv is picking up as well now remember regulation something that has been the key point on why people are still a little skeptical about crypto and those already invested are thinking what's going to happen next so don't worry sit back relax because i'm going to tell you everything that is there inside that cabinet note So watch very very carefully I'll get my coffee first All right it's been quite a week for crypto industry in India because we've been reporting to you on what this new bill will be all about Now I don't want to brag but I just want to tell you this straight off that NDT was the first one to tell you that this old bill that created a bloodbath in the market is not the one which is going to be tabled we told you there will be a new bill and there is a new bill and now again without bragging let me tell you that there is a new bill and it talks about regulation and not a ban let's look into the details of that cabinet note that ndtv has accessed and what does it say about this new bill number 1 exclusive detail let's talk about the legislation itself the name of the bill has changed and that is very significant why because it has gone from cryptocurrency to crypto asset it changes the entire way in which the government is looking at cryptocurrency as an asset class now crypto will not be recognized here that again not be recognized as a legal tender or a currency but it will be looked at as an asset class that means there is no threat to the economy nobody is asking people to replace rupee and put in crypto there no that's not happening it's not going to be looked at as a legal tender it is just as an asset class also in that regulation you get to know that private crypto will be regulated and not banned crypto assets will be dealt with only indian exchanges that is a key note there's lots more that needs to be known about this one and then that crypto assets will be regulated by sebi sebi now the organization the who looks after investments in the stock market as well they will be now looking after crypto assets in india which is quite an interesting facet also what does it really tell you is that india and the government would want some sort of mapping done for example why crypto indian exchanges right because every time you log into one there will be a kyc detail required that you'll put in your pan card and there will be a direct relation now to taxes etc so government wants that basic infrastructure in place and if you already have assets deployed abroad or in other exchanges etc government will give you a cut off date for you to declare those assets as well these are very important points for everybody who's an investor in crypto to understand but there are prohibitions in this bill as well and the cabinet note talks about no mining of crypto at all this is exactly what china had also done mind you but here the understanding is that not a lot of mining already happens in india so there is no going to be immediate impact of this as well also no payments in crypto this is key now there are several people who currently accept crypto as a mode of payment the government is saying that's not going to happen from the day this bill gets the approval from the parliament and from the president as well there are going to be penalties if you do not follow and those are going to be everything from non billable uh, offenses here there will be cognizable offenses you can go up to imprisonment of up to 2 years and there could be for violation penalties involving in range of 5 crore to 20 crore if crypto is used in terror related acts then 
the money laundering act can apply on those people as well a lot of stringent measures come in the minute you put in the money laundering act as well and the basic framework it also lays down the groundwork for rbi's digital currency but huge note over there the government will not talk about india's digital currency that the rbi not the sebi will look after in this bill that is something that will come in tandem and will be introduced by the government so that's all you really need to know about this cabinet note that we have exclusive details about and if all goes well ndtv is picking up and sunil prabhu bringing us all these details that in just about 15 days from now this will get the clearance from the cabinet and before the end of the session this will be tabled in parliament so very exciting december month coming up for all you and i crypto enthusiasts in the country So to speak to us about this, we've got news makers, not one but two for you today on CC. Let me introduce the first one, Milind Deora, the former Minister for Communication and Information Technology, senior leader of the Congress Party, joins us now. Hello, Milind. Welcome to CC. It's always lovely to have this chat about crypto with politicians, and now more than ever, they really need to educate themselves as well about what's going to happen next. Now I'm going to get into the details of the bill. You just heard what it's going to be about uh, in our explainer as well. But just to understand first up, uh, in scenario that this bill in the present form gets tabled in Parliament, what will be the Congress Party stand on this? Yeah, firstly, you know uh, what I would say is that I think it's very early for political parties to be framing opinions as to what to do with cryptocurrency. I think political parties, the government, policymakers in general are playing a wait and watch game. because this is an evolving medium and an evolving technology um i think what is very clear to a lot of people and it's a good thing that the government seems to have now moved away from its earlier position that it intends to ban cryptocurrencies which in my opinion was never possible to begin with because if you ban something like cryptocurrencies it will go underground and you will essentially uh, you will aid and abet uh, you know terror financing and money laundering and drug syndicates etc but what is what to me what is what needs to happen is that one is we need to elevate the discussion beyond cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency is an application of a technology called uh bitcoin uh, called blockchain okay. just like just like um you and i talking via the internet uh, on an app or on different mediums is an application of the internet just like the internet you can argue is an application of electricity and mobile telephony and telecommunications so uh, blockchain is a technology which is here to stay it's a disruptive technology it's a technology where strategically for a country like india as america china india and much of the world will be competing in three or four technological areas one is space technology one is artificial intelligence um one is perhaps semiconductors and wafer and uh, wafer foundries blockchain is also an important technology going forward that will have strategic ramifications for a country like india um as china cramps clamps down on its cryptocurrency industry on right. crypto miners right and Just seeks to promote thought, only its central bank to crypto mining uh, i want to delve into that but first up on exchanges front very crucial to understand what role will indian exchanges be playing when it comes to this policy can you share some insights with us Yeah I think that the, the, for the people who are watching your show and are interested in cryptocurrencies and in, interested in investing in cryptocurrencies as a as a instrument to earn money uh, I think the minute that SEBI for instance takes over regulating this as an asset class SEBI will lay out several criteria one of them for instance will be that they will register crypto exchanges with yes. them formally they will mandate that a crypto exchange must have a certain net worth uh, a background of the promoter will be vetted um at that stage what they what sebi will try and do is that they will try and move an unregulated informal industry hmm. to a formal regulated supervised industry and that's a good thing yes the minute that happens hmm. and you know that just like today we know that if you want to buy a stock of a publicly listed company hmm. that you go to nsc which is an exchange there's hmm. bsc which is an exchange hmm. in mumbai the national stock exchange or the bombay stock exchange yes. now those get regulated by sebi hmm. similarly sebi will regulate and say these are the official crypto exchanges hmm. 
hmm. on which you can trade in car- in cryptocurrency hmm. and that on its own sonal will be an awareness campaign to educate investors or potential investors or even yes. those who currently own crypto wallets hmm. Hmm. that they will be able then to, to to know that if the cryptocurrency or the crypto exchange on which i have been trading is not registered and a formal part of semi right then i'm doing it i'm investing and trading at my own yeah, risk yeah it's like what happens to my right. money because then, if the then exchange is not answerable to someone yeah you're doing it in yeah. the gray market it's like illegally gambling on cricket matches that people do mm-hmm. uh, it's not regulated if someone <laughs> steals your money if some if a promoter runs right. away if the mm-hmm. crypto car- if currency collapses there yeah. are no rules and norms laid out by a government regulator very very important points that you've mentioned milan and so good to see a uh, politician being so informed about this as well my last question really on banning of uh, crypto mining you said that in the first answer if i'm not wrong i caught on to that now in this present bill india uh, india has proposed the government has proposed that there should be no uh, mining of crypto allowed in india your thoughts on that well i think that see that's the chinese the chinese model on cryptocurrencies has been a very aggressive one and it's part of china's overall strategy on tech companies uh, what china has gone out to do is basically uh, ban because mind you 70% of global crypto mining uh, i mean when i say mining it's the word mining but it's not that somebody is going and digging something a yeah. cryptocurrency as a metal that exists under the earth surface uh, it's basically huge warehouse warehouses a uh, huge um, servers and it consumes a lot of electricity and that's what mining for cryptocurrency really entails and china has gone out and china controls 70% of the world's mining market uh china has gone out and clamped down on those miners what china is trying to do is they are trying to basically shut down and destroy the private crypto ecosystem in china which means everything from mining to cryptocurrencies to exchanges and push chinese citizens towards the central bank backed digital yuan which is that it's like the digital rupee um and that's essentially what the rbi would want in india but whether we should allow mining or not allow mining i think is a debatable issue i think that what we should certainly do is we should embrace blockchain technology hmm. because blockchain I technology see. on its own own has several self regulatory measures i see that hmm. prevent fraud and blockchain technology makes up the larger umbrella of something called decentralized finance because mm. mind you for several decades for almost a century mm. finance in the way that you and i transact has been through intermediaries like banks and mm. banks charge a fee from you and i to send money to each other mm. um that is something which which blockchain seeks yeah. to disrupt and disintermediate right and i'm ahead. so happy milind you're talking about all this and especially the way you're describing it it's almost like a patchala thank you so much really that's all the time i'm afraid i have so the quick note over there that's coming in from milind also is almost like not follow the china model but also be aware of the us model somewhere in the middle is what india really needs to be fighting out for also saying importantly over there that currently there is no political color on crypto we wait to see what happens next Also coming up next we're going to slip into a break now but coming up next another news maker this time an ally of the BJP how do they stand when it comes to crypto we will know from Dr Patnaik in a moment from now stay tuned you're watching coffee and crypto Welcome back. We've got another news maker for you today and this is a member of the Parliament Standing Committee on Finance, Rajya Sabha MP from the BJD, Dr. Amar Patnaik. Thank you so much for speaking with CC. Delighted to have you on the program. Uh, a little body also told me that you're personally quite in sort of uh, excited about the crypto space we saw you asking some very pertinent questions in parliament as well when a q&a was going on from the finance minister so just take us through your personal view on which way is this going as a regulation not and would love to know your party's view on this as well i think uh, <clears throat> the way it is 
uh, the, uh, the previous bill was uh, against the context when there was no Supreme Court judgment which came uh, in response to the RBI's notification for putting some kind of a ban in private cryptocurrencies. Uh, so I think the new bill would be something different, which would probably uh, take us through a roadmap for regulation. And uh, this regulation wouldn't be, again, I don't think it is going to be very watertight to start with. Uh, because I think it has to evolve over a period of time. Hmm. Uh, that's what we call it as a, and that's the smartest thing to do is a sandbox uh, approach. Hmm. Uh, so the uh, safest, uh, you know, the cryptos are, it could be considered as tokens, it could be taken as currencies, it could be considered as commodities, it could be considered as securities. So different regulators actually come into play if you treat each of these uh, categories of uh, private currencies. Hmm. Uh, then there is, of course, the, uh, the, the the basic question, is there a need for having a private uh, cryptocurrency uh, when government is itself considering, and which is most likely going to have, uh, is a fiat uh, central bank uh, digital currency, which is a good thing, I think, because that, hmm. that will actually uh, give the uh, investors an option to choose uh, have, uh, between a fiat currency and a completely private uh, cur uh, currency. Uh, having said so, the yeah. private cryptocurrency has, uh, you know, it, the, the market itself has increased manifold. And I said it in the parliament that it has increased 10 times more yes. than when the last report came of the government. Mm -hmm. So it's dated report and we can't be talking of a ban against the context of that report. And we have to think about the latest market. And the market is developed. And even if you uh, think to wish it away, it will continue to grow probably. And then the when there is a market failure... As it happens, uh, it, it is automatically the government which is called in to step in. Hmm. And that's uh, when I think uh, the government will have to do. So why not think about it from before, nice. lay out a roadmap, hmm. uh, go through a process of graded regulation, hmm. Hmm. start with hmm. the option of having an asset class, uh, treating crypt cryptos as asset classes, and then going into the more risky propositions, considering the fact, no undenying fact that underlying asset for any of these private cryptocurrencies is not there mm -hmm. uh, because it's not a fiat currency. Uh, right. So that's why I'm looking at the new regulation, which should uh, mm -hmm. probably be unveiled in the in, in next few weeks, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, the way the government is thinking of. Right. So in few days, perhaps, if uh, we are counting down to that, really. Uh, but you mentioned very interestingly about sort of a graded response, right, that uh, the government of India has towards or you hope the government of India would have towards the cryptocurrency and the entire blockchain tech. Take us through, just expand on that graded response a little for me, please. So what I have in mind is, uh, as you said very correctly, that at, on one level, we have to keep educating people that this is an extremely risky proposition. Hmm. The government is stepping in with regulation to bring some amount of stability to the currency hmm. as it should be. That's the basic definition of a sovereign currency. Hmm. And it's not a legal tender in, in case of private cryptocurrency. Therefore, the risks hmm. are much higher. And then, you know, first start with the safest, which is easy to regulate the asset class. Then get into uh, a situation of uh, uh, considering it as tokens and currencies, uh, and then uh, probably think about multiple uh, transactions being possible. Uh, you know, the cash out could be in any form, and then you say of a hybrid regulator uh, who, who looks at you know uh, different kinds of uh, uh, possibilities that the private cryptocurrency can play uh, can, can have. Uh, you know, okay. in Singapore, uh, as I was uh, trying to go through how they regulate, they regulate yeah. the uh, crypto market and they do it by their agency, their regulator, getting in all the requests from the mm. exchange and then segregating them as to whether it's a token, whether it mm. is going to be a securities, whether it is going to be something else. And then they send it to that particular uh, okay. bike regulator or let's say sub regulator. So that's a different kind of a structure altogether. Mm. Uh, Germany follows differently. Canada follows differently. So I think we have to first recognize the fact that this market is not going to go away if Absolutely. we put a ban. If we think that you know this 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 people will be hmm. scared of investing uh, in the crypto private currency because there is no underlying asset value. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not going to happen because young hmm. people love to speculate. So there's speculation. Hindi mein jo kehte hain jo maza hai na speculation mein. It's not young people alone who are investing. But the risk will happen when the cash out options, you know, uh, the, 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 the need for a cash out arises, then mm. the problem starts. Mm. If there is a market failure, mm. then the government will be asked to call a, come in, just as this mm. has happened in cheat funds. In cheat funds, mm -hmm. 
No, nobody asked them people to invest in cheat funds. But mm. when cheat fund people uh, lost money, then the governments in West Bengal, in Orissa, everywhere, they have started having corpus funds, and that's right, taxpayers' so money. Catch up already. So, mm. so, so you know, governments should be aware of this, and therefore, my mm. strong pitch is that you have to go in for a regulation, mm. and that regulation, of course, could be a very graded one, putting yourself in a sandbox kind of an approach and see mm. how the things evolve. That's actually a very nice way that you've put it and we really hope the government is listening into these very, very valuable comments there, uh, quickly telling us that there needs to be buckets in which crypto and blockchain is looked at and then there has to be graded response and this might just be the first step. All right, there's so much to unpack from what you have just said. Thank you so much, Dr. Patnaik, for joining us. I'm afraid that's all the time we have on CC this week but watching very very carefully of what happens next because remember like i said in just a few days from now we should be hearing more from the government the cabinet note will be getting approval and then it's time for the parliament to do its job and of course this is one stop where we get you all those details so stay tuned until next time bye bye